Many scheduling applications enable interactive planning processes by providing the users with enhanced Gantt chart functionality. Here are 10 simple and yet powerful features that you should consider when planning a Gantt-centric application. First, and this seems to be obvious, if you want to create an interactive application, the Gantt control that you use must be interactive as well. So, if you want to move an activity, you want to drag it with the mouse from its previous position and drop it at the target position. Also, you might want to change the duration of an activity by intuitive mouse operations. All of this requires a synchronization of the graphical part of the Gantt diagram and the respective table part. Similarly, make sure that you can create new activities with drawing them on the graph. Many planning applications, like project planning or production planning, work with multiple dates for one task. A commonly used approach is to plan both the earliest start date as well as the latest start date and likewise with the finish dates. All these dates should get shown for each activity in the Gantt chart, as you can see here with the grey and blue colored nodes. Of course, each individual date should be able getting changed by simple mouse operations. This enables the users of the planning application to flexibly manage and plan the operations and to easily create scenarios. A critical aspect of a time-centric planning, like you typically do with a Gantt chart, is to understand the dependencies between the activities. However, if you have many activities, showing all links between them might cause more confusion than insight. A flexible Gantt tool allows you to show and hide all links with one click and also support various link types like end start and end and others. If you work with large datasets, you will need to group these data and the Gantt chart needs to reflect the particular grouping of your processes, resources and tasks. Having groups in the Gantt chart requires that you can collapse and expand them easily. Once data are grouped, you still might want to get a rough overview on what is happening in that group. This can get achieved with using summary bars. However, summary bars have a clear flaw as can be seen when expanding the group again. This is that they do not show if there are time frames within one group when there is happening no activity at all. A flexible Gantt chart should be able to show all nodes even if the group is collapsed. Gantt charts are a powerful tool to visualize planning and production data. They get even more powerful if they can change the look and feel based on business logics. A first and simple example is that nodes automatically change their colors depending on a certain status of the operation. Here, I change the colors depending on the duration of the tasks. Okay, fair enough, this seems trivial, but imagine how powerful this is if a task that runs danger of being late automatically would turn red. A powerful Gantt can do more than working with business logics based on a status. It also can deal with event-based business rules. Let's look at this example of a training course schedule. If we move this course to an earlier start, the appearance of the respective node and of another node automatically changes. 
If you look up the legend, we recognize that this indicates a room conflict that had been created by moving forward the course of Mr. Erickson. These event-driven Gantt behavior could be applied also to any other conflicting situation. You also need to take into account that a Gantt chart is the two-dimensional representation of a multidimensional plan. With the current plan, we have three dimensions, first courses, second lecturers and third rooms. A flexible GAN control should allow you to switch easily and rapidly between all the respective views. This also helps you better understand potential conflicts alerts you might have received from having a business rules sensitive GAN chart. A typical challenge in virtually any scheduling situation is that you need to plan with different resources which do not have the same availability. The resource or even activity specific work free times should get shown in the Gantt chart as well. The example here consists of three resources with the first being available three days a week, the second four days and the third six days. Here you see that an activity is shown as thin black line during the work free periods. Of course, the GAN should recognize that it has to change the activity's duration if it is moved from a highly available resource to a resource with limited availability. This screen shows another GAN chart feature, which is the histogram, which gives you additional information about the capacity usage. If you change activities in the upper part of the Gantt chart, the histogram automatically updates and gives you new insights on how these plan changes might affect your capacity situation. Powerful Gantt controls also should be able to combine multiple Gantt charts on one form. In the current example, we see two separate Gantt charts. One shows the already planned and allocated tasks. The gun chart at the top of the screen displays the not yet planned activities. That way, the planner virtually sees his to-do list and can take one activity from the upper part and put it into the concrete plan in the lower part of his gantt centric scheduling application. You need a powerful Gantt chart control for your scheduling application? Challenge us and get a 30 days free trial at www.netronic.com